1961 by Brother Tercius, who was a Divine Word missionary from Holland. Uh, Brother had been trained for 10 years in Holland in the various aspects of orthopedics. So when he came to Ghana in 61, he saw many people, uh, both adults and children, crawling on the ground because of polio. In the 60s, polio was endemic in Ghana, and so there were many people who really had no access to orthopedic care. So Brother Tercisius, with his background in orthopedics, started the orthopedic workshop. What he did is he gathered young men from the area in Adawajiri, and he taught them how to make everything that's necessary for a person to be put on their feet. He taught them how to make orthopedic shoes. He taught them how to make artificial legs, how to make crutches, how to make arms, how to make splints. And so he spent a lot of time uh, trying to train these young men who for the most part had a middle school leaving certificate. You here, this is a statue of our founder called Brother Tassitius de Realta. And you can see he's here with a, a little boy who's wearing a pair of calipers and crutches just to tell people here around coming in that this is a center that is aimed to help children who are physically challenged. It is our main goal. We did this statue in memory of brother who passed away in 2014, a very visionary man who started the whole center and out of his vision is helping about 7,400 people now in this current era that we are living. As he continued working here and began to put people on their feet, uh, it became obvious that some parents had a difficult time with their children wanting to wear the orthopedic appliances and for the mothers to be able to put up with a child who gets pretty uh, adamant about what they're gonna do. So the uh, brother started a children's department and at the children's department, uh, children were admitted for physiotherapy and for training so that a child would stay here and when they got their appliances, a physiotherapist would work with them on how to use it, how to put it on, how to take it off, and how important it was for them to use it all during the day. It was then uh, obvious to Brother that not everybody from the country could come down to Adawajiri. So then he started the mobile unit. And the mobile unit goes to every part of Ghana. Uh, it started in 65 and it continues today. Our team was in the Volta region last week and tomorrow they will be leaving for the Brangahafa area. So we continue to offer our services to people who are far away from the main center here in Adawajiri. Things have developed in Ghana and fortunately um, polio has been eradicated. So we have many, many patients that are old polio patients that we have to continue to serve by making them uh, calipers and shoes and crutches. But today we're not seeing polio cases. So now what we see are birth deformities like uh, club feet, knocked knees, bow legs. Um, we see some children that are born without the tibia and therefore their parents have to decide whether the child will be a wheelchair patient the rest of their life or whether they will agree to amputation and have the child walk with prosthetic legs. The OPD department, the outpatient department, and over here is where we receive all of our patients for the first time. Uh, Official is on Mondays and Tuesdays, that's when patients come. And uh, we're standing by this statue because we want to let you understand something. It has a beautiful inscription. It says, my disability is my cross, but my cross is my only support. And as you can see, the statue standing here, has the absence of one leg and a hand but what is really helping the statue stand is the cross so we believe that we are an embodiment of Christ using orthopedic services to help people stand on their feet and live independent lives that is physically challenged people and uh, we represent it with this we believe that the more we put our hopes in Christ the more better we can stand on our feet to any challenges that we face in our lives and also this statue is here as a representation to let our patient understand that they are the right place
place if they have an amputation they are the right place and then there is hope for them to stand on their feet uh, once again we're also trying to let people understand that regardless of your disability you need not to hide it because this statue is not hiding and everybody can see exactly what's going on and then people would learn to appreciate rather than hiding it as well my name is Antonio Say, a Cat One holder in PNO. I did my degree at Tanzania. I had a degree in prosthetics and orthotics, and currently working as a consultant at an orthopedic training center, and also the workshop manager currently. And what I do is on Mondays we we do consultation. We receive patients of diverse problems relating to the foot and also the hands. We consult here first and see what the patient will need. And then we will recommend and send the patient to the workshop for the appropriate gadget to be produced. So that is basically what I do here. I also supervise the workshop on the things that they do, the gadget they produce, the fitting, and also the, the repair works. Uh, that is what I do basically at the workshop. Uh, it is um, both uh, AK and BK, above knee and below knee amputation cases. But also, cerebral palsy is also on the rise. Averagely, about 30% um, of children born nowadays are coming with cerebral palsy. I don't know whether it's because of the neglect or something, but mostly because they had birth asphyxia. So they are born with uh, cerebral palsy. What we do is we give, uh, we give exercises. We train them on how to uh, cater for their child, how to care for their child. Different exercises. If they have any contractures in their limbs, we also give braces to help straight, uh, straighten the contractures. And also we advise them on the kind of diet they should give their children to help the fast, faster, to help boost the rehabilitation process. As brother began to age, it became obvious that we had to have someone else teach uh, the young technicians in the workshop. And so we were approached after our 50th anniversary, we were approached by the Ministry of Health and they told us that we would be the only people that could set up a training center for orthotics and prosthetics and start to offer a, a diploma program. So we did that. In 2013, we started the Brother Tercius Prosthetic and Orthotics Training College. And thank God, Brother was still alive to see the college be dedicated. And I know he said to me several times, I wish I was 20 years younger because I would love to teach in the college. And brother was an excellent teacher. He was very, very gifted in so many ways, but he loved teaching. And so uh, he got to see this training college started. The training college started with, um, I think, 10 young men. And then the ministry said we would have to increase our numbers because they would be paying the staff, et cetera. And I said we would increase our numbers if we got young women. And so now I'm very proud that in the workshop we have several female technicians. And this is kind of, um, you know, it's breaking through the, the glass ceiling for women because most people thought they couldn't be technicians and I always felt they come at things in a different way and so they would be a blessing to our patients and so when you go to the workshop you will see some female technicians. Welcome to the workshop itself, the orthopedic workshop, uh, a very huge workshop uh, where we have quite a number of technicians here making different kinds of appliances for the physically challenged. So let me kindly walk you through different tables. Uh, each table here we try to say is a department. They try to do something specific over here. It's a shoes table that are making special kind of shoes. But how about we come here? Um, I work here as a PNO technical officer and um, double as a consultant as well. So in the workshop, we have different um, departments, the prosthetic department and then the orthotic department. 
So the prosthetic department concentrates more on producing artificial limbs to replace missing limbs um, due to probably um, accident or we call it RT or um, any theft deformities which also can cause uh, an amputation to be made on a patient. So what I do here specifically is um, I make uh, orthotic shoes for persons with uh, foot deformities. So what I'm doing here currently is for a child with flat foot. So we have the peroneal boots here, which I'm doing, well, it's the foundation though, so I've not got it anywhere yet. But we do the shoes and then um, we put in all the, we factor in all the uh, necessary corrections we need to do in the shoe. So it's either the shoe is going to correct a deformity, if it's not going to correct a deformity, it's going to compensate for a deformity. In the year 2021, I got admission to the Baratasisius Prosthetics and Orthotics Training College. So I graduated last year, that's the 23rd of August 2023. And currently I'm doing my national service at this workshop. And the department where I am now is the prosthetics department, in which we fix artificial limbs for patients who have been amputated. So when it comes to the prosthetics department, or to start with, prosthetics has to do with uh, making a device to replace a missing body part. So what I have here now is a transtibial prosthesis. This is a prosthesis that is given to a patient who has been amputated below the knee. We also fabricate footwear to alleviate pains. So in conditions like plantar fasciitis, where the patient has a pain at the dorsal part of the foot. We design um, nice footwear and factoring where the necessary pressures need to be um, taken off or where we need to put pressures on the foot. We factor in all those things to make the patient feel very, 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 very comfortable. So that is what we do here at the shoe department. You can see we have different kinds of um, splints and calipers that are done here. It is being undergone through a process and you can see the materials that are being used are very basic materials that, are, uh, that can be used in making these appliances for different people with different kinds of uh, conditions. We also do home visits in our area. We started that around, I guess, 2013-14. Uh, we began to ask ourselves, are there people in our area that are not coming to us for help? And if so, why not? And so our uh, PR person, who's also a um, community health worker, and the nurse, they start going around. And what we found out that the people in our area that were not coming to us were people who had children with cerebral palsy. So week after week, when they came to debrief, I heard the same thing. You know, the children are being locked in their room so the mothers can work. The children are being left out in the compound. Hopefully somebody will pay attention to them. So with that information, we decided in 2017 to open a daycare for cerebral palsy children in our area. Now we limit this daycare to no more than eight children and the reason for that is that it's not a free um, babysitting service. The children are picked up with our van at 6 30 in the morning. They come here in the morning they get their physiotherapy, their occupational therapy and we have a special uh, education teacher. They have a hot meal, they have a bath and at 3 30 the van brings them home. The children that we take care of them, we cook for them, we bathe them, we wash their things. We have a laundry also just close to this place. We have the laundry there. We cook every day. They cook three times a day and in between snack for the children. And also they go to school. We have our classrooms over there that they have their class teachers also there teaching them. I am the head of the primary school. When they come, 
they are from different schools and different grades that came for rehabilitation. But um, it, it happens that when they come, wherever they are in their various uh, classes, uh, they will have to wait for the rehabilitation to be over and then they go back to school and the many of time they are behind school or some of them do have go, do go for repetition which is not good for them so uh, the center taught it twice that they should have a schooling while they are having their rehabilitation so that when they go back home wherever level they are they will continue to uh, be a par with their uh, classmates that they left behind now i can tell you from my own experience the first meeting i had with parents before we started and the meeting we had the first Christmas after this, I didn't think I was looking at the same parents. To see the relief in their face, to see that the ladies now had their hair done, they were very content, they were able to work without worrying about their child all day. It made a big difference, not only in the child, but on the the moms and the dads. We have already mainstreamed three of our children back to the normal schools. And on home visits, we go to that school to make sure that the child is doing well. It was always in our strategic plan and our dream to open a center in the north of Ghana to take care of our northern brothers and sisters. Each year, the orthopedic center sees more than 6,000 to 7,000 patients. And it's very hard for Northerners to come down here. It's expensive right now. And sometimes they'll travel down, pay a couple of hundred to get here, and they might need a repair that costs 50 CDs. Uh, so with uh, an anonymous donor's help, we were able on January the 15th, which was Brother Tercis's 10th anniversary of death, to open the uh, orthopedic training center Wally Wally branch. That center is now functioning. Uh, they have four technicians and they are able to service the people in the north. So we're very, very proud of the new center. We realize that we have to get more technicians. So we're working with our college to uh, be able to have some of those technicians after they finish their, their um, diploma to be stationed in Wally Wally so that it gradually that too will develop like the orthopedic center in Enswam. So as a consultant here, my job is also to help fish out those that cannot afford the device, the, the less privileged ones, because our center is an NGO. We are humanitarian, we help people who doesn't have, most of our patients don't have anything. Like myself, I was a, a patient here. Um, I was here for about two years or three years even. Brother Tatishos took care of me. He taught me what I know now and even helped me to walk. So I decided to bring what I know into bear and also help people like myself to help them stand. So our services, um Really, we're, we serve people throughout the whole country, and I know people don't know about us, but a lot of people will learn about us only because they have a need for this. Um, so I, the, the thing here is, here are the services available in your country. I have had even, even politicians, one of the, the late uh, vice presidents came to visit and he said, I did not know this was here. And many times the government will send their, their own workers overseas to get an artificial leg. And they pay thousands and thousands of dollars where you get the same leg here for maybe 6,000 CDs with the training. We also have people that come and make donations, and I think this is a Catholic um, station that I'm speaking of, so I encourage you to make the Orthopedic Center one of your donor 
people because we do have people from various religious groups. And I think we might have three or four Catholic parishes. So I would appeal to you to learn more about us and see how you can help us because everything we do here at the Center for the Children and the Adults is highly subsidized. Because if we had to charge what it cost us to make a leg, to make um, an orthopedic shoe, to make a KFO, AFO, nobody in Ghana could afford that. And so we depend on donations in the country as well as out of the country because we have to continue to make these services affordable to our people because most of our people for the most part are marginalized, are coming from poor families that really can't afford this. So thank you very much for giving me this time uh, to explain to you a little bit about what the center is about. When St. Lawrence was asked, going back to the early centuries, to bring the treasures of the church. The Roman soldiers told St. Lawrence, the deacon in Rome, bring the treasures of the church. And Lawrence said, give me two or three days and I'll bring all the treasures of the church. So after two or three days, he gathered all the, the sick, the lepers, the handicapped, the poor, the needy, the marginalized, and brought them all to the church. And when the Roman soldier came, he said, these are our treasures. The soldier was so angry, so annoyed with them, because he expected them to bring big gold chalices and suburi and monstrances. But Lawrence says, no, our treasures are the poor and the needy and the marginalized. And this is true in our church today. The treasures of our church are the poor and the needy. Exactly what St. Paul says, Ephesians chapter two, verse 10, you are a work of art. Everybody is a work of art, and especially the poor, the needy, the marginalized, the handicapped, the lepers, they're all works of art. And that's why I'm appealing you to come and help these children and adults who are here at the OTC at Andrew Jury to come and support them. I'm a member of the board, and I feel obliged. I want to tell people, all that is happening here in the center. This is a center of hope, a center of love, a center where those who come here with broken limbs, broken limbs, those who come here to get for seasons, how, how they are loved and cared for. They're not thrown aside by society. We, we love them, we care for them, we want to help them. Those who come in crawling, they leave walking. They give them hope, give them encouragement, and help them, especially the poor and the needy. The work that is done in this center here is absolutely wonderful, wonderful. I wish more people would know about the great work the Sister Elizabeth is doing here at this center. She took over from Brother Tarsisius, Divine Word Missionary, who started this center here. And they've helped tens of thousands of children and adults helps them to walk again, helps them in all the different diseases which they need. So I'm asking you to please come and help them. Come and support them here in Adawajiri. What way you can support them, whatever way you can help them. Come and visit them here. They're here near St. Martin's Secondary School, right next, next door across the road is St. Martin. So you won't get losses. St. Martin School is right beside us here. Come and visit them. Come and see what they are doing, the great work they are doing. The miracles they are performing every day. When you go to the workshop, you go to the, the, the wards, you see what is happening. So my appeal is especially to our, our Catholic institutions, our Catholic parishes, our brothers, uh, the Muslims, and the other Pentecostal churches. Come, come, come and see what they are doing here. Come and help these children. Many of them are forgotten. Many of them have been thrown aside. Come and let's support them and see what help that you can give to those who are sick. We who are well and strong have that obligation from God to go and help those who haven't got. This is our task and we should do this to go and help others. Give them courage, give them dignity, give them love. Give them hope. This is what you want, and you can do it. 
So please, all our different religious bodies, our Catholic and non-Catholic, all our Muslim brothers, please come and support this center here at the Occupational Therapy Center, OTC, at Ajahn Come and visit or come and help them and send a donation to help the great work which they are doing. Thank you and God bless you.